We all love the Hulk. Whether he's broing out with Tony Stark or ready to compete in an intergalactic gladiator match with Thor, he's always ready to entertain. But that's the Hulk. What about this alter ego, the Red Hulk? Fans have been hoping to see this red monster make his debut in the MCU, but until that day, we got you covered with all the best facts about this red rage monster. But before we get started, be sure to click that subscribe button. That way, you'll get some more awesome videos like this one right on your homepage every day. Jarvis, I want to know about the Red Hulk. I want to know who he is. Maverick is the new Red Hulk. The latest iteration of the Red Hulk is actually pretty recent, having made his debut in January 2017 in the US Avengers series. Red Hulk is still very much the same kind of being we know and love, or hate, but he's no longer paired up with General Ross, someone who's been synonymous with the character for years. Instead, the burden went to General Robert L. Maverick, who made his debut back in 2015 in Avengers Volume 6. Where Ross was inflicted with the gamma radiation that resulted in him transforming into the Red Hulk, Maverick's story is a bit different. Instead, he has an implant embedded into his body called the Hulk Plugin. The technology makes sure that Maverick doesn't lose it for too long by limiting his time as Red Hulk to one hour every 24 hours. Unlike Ross's Hulk, Maverick's red self actually gets to keep his trademark mustache. He's also been known to rock a styling pair of sunglasses while being the Red Hulk. It's the Hulk, Einstein. But that Hulk is red. Ours is green. Yeah, well, I heard it started out gray. Bottom line, it could have polka dots, it'd still be the Hulk. This comic book entry also sees different versions of Captain America, Iron Patriot, Squirrel Girl, Enigma, and Cannonball working together. Do you prefer Ross as the Red Hulk or the new version in General Maverick? Red Hulk and the Thunderbolts Marvel likes to get a bit wacky when it comes to their other lines and universes, and Marvel Now was no exception to this. It was a relaunch that was designed to attract new readers by giving them awesome, rebranded superhero and villain teams. One such team was the introduction of the Thunderbolts. The team was led by none other than General Ross with the power of Red Hulk, Punisher, Deadpool, Venom, and Elektra. Seriously, that's an awesome lineup. The Thunderbolts came together to function in a similar way to the X-Force. The other mercs on the team end up helping Ross shut down other radiation technologies around the world for the most part without any backing or recognition from the government. It's no surprise though to learn that the other members of the team got pretty fed up of doing the same kind of missions over and over again for Ross. So a compromise was met where they would help Ross in exchange for doing missions for individual members of the Thunderbolts. In a hilariously meta moment, Deadpool asks Ross if they can kidnap Ryan Reynolds, the man who perfectly played the Merc with the mouth back on the big screen. This plan didn't get greenlit though and the mission went instead to the Punisher. Here's hoping Ryan Ryan Reynolds will cameo in the comic book page at some point with Deadpool. Honey, is that all? I've waited for this moment. All I've wanted is this moment. And now, now, I'm stronger! We may yet see Red Hulk in the MCU. If the Red Hulk should not show up to Hulk's space gladiator side job, there's still hope that this fan-favorite villain will still have his moment to shine in the MCU before Phase 3 is up. While the MCU would have to find a way to give Ross enough characterization to justify his transformation into the Red Hulk, it is still possible that he'll show up in one of the Infinity War films. What? He's a monster! How did you con the president into believing otherwise? While nothing has been confirmed yet, there is talk that Liv Tyler will return to the MCU to reprise her role as Betty. If this is the case, perhaps Betty will meet her demise here in one of the Infinity films at the hands of the Mad Titan Thanos, thus kickstarting his transformation into the Red Hulk. With William Hurt returning for the events of Civil War, it's safe to say that we haven't seen the end of Thunderbolt Ross on the big screen. Whether he gets the chance to make his long-awaited transformation is another question. The character, after all, only has one solo cinematic entry in the MCU, so some extra focus on him would definitely be welcome. He was almost in the Civil War movie. For fans who pay attention to names, many will know that General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross was already part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe ever since The Incredible Hulk came out way back in Phase 1. Played by William Hurt in the MCU, the actor reprised his role as the toughest nails military leader in the smash hit film Civil War, which saw him implementing the Sokovia Accords before the Avengers. While Ross may be part of the MCU, his red rage monster alter ego has not graced the big screen yet. Many fans were insanely excited though when they learned that William Hurt would be reprising his role as 
Ross for Civil War, however, with many believing that he would finally turn into the Red Hulk. The Russo brothers were playing around with the idea of including the Red Hulk in the battle royale that was in their movie, but opted to exclude him from the plot. Red Hulk serves as a primary antagonist for the Hulk, and without the giant green rage monster present, there was no point in having the Red Hulk show up. The character has yet to be established too, so having him randomly show up would have been pretty confusing to casual fans of the film series. Perhaps we'll get a sneak peek or a hint come Ragnarok. I don't care what he wants to prove or what he does for the sake of the cameras. A Hulk is a Hulk is a Hulk. Green, red, or blue, doesn't matter. The Ultimate Weapon Despite the fact that General Ross was created in the 1960s as an antagonist for Bruce Banner, his transformation into the terrifying Red Hulk wouldn't happen until much later. Back in 2008, Jeff Loeb and Ed McGuinness premiered a new run for The Incredible Hulk, introducing the Red Menace right out of the bat in issue 1. It wasn't until issue 23 that it was revealed that Red Hulk was in fact General Ross. General Ross! Get out! As previously mentioned, Ross didn't have it easy after he was discharged from the Air Force. Things only got worse for him after the death of his daughter Betty at the hands of Abomination. Ross went rock bottom after that and was motivated only by his desire to destroy the Hulk. Apparently not learning his lesson the first time, Ross reached out to the Underworld yet again and came into contact with MODOK, who eventually opens the door to the Super Soldier program. Ross then in turn subjects himself to the high levels of gamma radiation and various kinds of tests, which naturally result in a general Ross transforming into the sinister Red Hulk. With his newfound power, he finally saw the means to take on Banner, the man he so passionately hated. Red Hulk, meet Red King. In the Marvel comic book universe, there just so happens to be multiple parallel universes that coexist with the main thread that we get to witness. Dubbed Earth 616, this is where the core stories come from these days. In the Marvel comic book storyline titled Secret Wars, many of these universes got to collide on the planet known as Battle World. Back in 2015, one such subplot within the Secret Wars detailed a piece of turf called Greenland, and the Baron of said turf was an alternate version of the Red Hulk, the Red King. The Red King found himself the target of an alternate version of Captain America, simply known as Captain here, who's doing so on orders given to him by the God Emperor Doom. Yeah, Secret Wars goes all out. This version of the Red Hulk meets his demise after Captain, Devil Dinosaur, and the doppelganger Rulk raid his palace and demand the release of Bucky Barnes. Thing is, Red King also already killed off Bucky earlier, which caused Captain and Devil Dinosaur to ultimately terminate the Red King once and for all. Give me the Hulk. Daddy's Little Red Girl we mentioned that one of the biggest contributing factors to General Ross's breakdown was his daughter Betty. He was already pretty broken when she walked away from her father, but news of her passing shattered him to a point of no return. Instead of burying or cremating her though, Ross decided it was best to keep her body in a cryogenic state. As part of his deal with MODOK, Betty was brought back to life before Ross was given the means to become Red Hulk and take on his nemesis and Betty's former lover, Bruce Banner. You want me? Come and get me. Thanks to the power of magic, MODOK is able to bring Betty Ross back to life. She is given the same kind of gamma radiation in the process as well. Things didn't go as smoothly for Betty, however, as she was also brainwashed. Instead of having a clear mind like her father, Betty is put into a confused and agitated state and upon learning that Ross plans to betray MODOK, is turned into a red she-hulk with orders to kill her own father. Red Hulk can wield Mjolnir. As if being a giant, radiated rage monster wasn't enough, Red Hulk likes to go above and beyond the Call of Duty and bring weapons to his fights. Whether it be old school weapons or more modern firearms like the gun he used against Abomination while on a revenge quest, it's been said that whoever holds this hammer should he be worthy shall possess the power of Thor. This article to the statute of Thor's hammer though excludes the Red Hulk. Yeah, that giant red rage monster actually can wield it, and it has nothing to do with being worthy or anything. In fact, Red Hulk can wield Mjolnir thanks to his strength and strategic mind. In Hulk Volume 2, Issue 5, Red Hulk is able to use Mjolnir quite effectively thanks to his ability to survive in space. Taking advantage of the lack of gravity, Red Hulk has no problem wielding the hammer in the cosmos. In Issue 12 of Volume 2, Red Hulk finds himself in a battle against both the Silver Surfer and Tarax. Red Hulk manages to get his hands on Tarax's cosmic axe and goes full French Revolution on his head. He makes quick work of the Surfer afterwards, a testament to his powers by absorbing his cosmic powers. After the battle, Red Hulk traveled to the Dark Dimension with both the Cosmic Axe and the Surfboard of the Silver Surfer in hand. You've all heard of the Green Hulk. Well, if one wasn't enough, a new Hulk has arrived. A Red Hulk. 
Red Hulk isn't just a red version of the Hulk. Okay, let's be honest. When we look at the Red Hulk, it's not hard to assume that he's just the Hulk with a new color palette. Many might call that lazy, others might call it a clear indicator for Banner's opposite. It's true that Ross's Red Hulk shares many of the same strengths and attributes that the Hulk does. Both creatures possess superhuman strength, which alone is something to be feared, thick skin that protects them from heavy-duty firepower, regeneration, super jumping capabilities, and the ability to travel in space. That last bit might help answer as to how the Hulk showed up ready for Space Gladiator Camp in the Ragnarok trailer. But Red Hulk has a few tricks up his sleeve that makes him unique to his green-skinned counterpart. Unlike Hulk, whose strength increases the angrier he gets, Red Hulk increases his body temperature as well as his residual radiation. This means that his power levels are so intense that the heat coming off his body was enough to turn sand into glass in his first ever fight. Ross is also fully conscious when he's the Red Hulk, unlike Banner, thus giving him a strategic military advantage. However, his body temperature can also weaken him if he gets too hot, so it's best for him to end things sooner rather than later. You've lost! Do you hear me? You're nothing! <laughs> You're wrong. I'm an Avenger. Dark Motivations General Ross, and by extension Red Hulk, was initially designed to be one of the main antagonists for the Hulk, created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby back in the 60s, and grew to hate Bruce Banner with every fiber in his body after the gamma-filled accident. My mercy has its limits, Brute! Mercy? What's that? Ross was initially no big fan of Banner, seeing him as a weakling, but once he learned that he was in fact the Incredible Hulk, he made it his life's mission to go after Banner. To help him with his sinister plans, Ross has gone as far as teaming up with other supervillains in order to get the job done, despite the fact that he's a respected general in the United States Air Force. His crusade, though, naturally doesn't go well for Ross, and his career ends up suffering because of it. He's eventually dishonorably discharged due to working with other villains, and also sees his daughter Betty remove herself from Ross's life. She ended up picking Banner over her own father, which in this case is understandable. This ends up being a huge factor in Ross becoming the infamous Red Hulk. You're making it very difficult to not turn into the Hulk and tear you apart. Well, that is everything you need to know about the Hulk's fiery counterpart. Do you think we'll see the Red Hulk on the big screen in the MCU? Should we see him, or would it feel more like fan service? Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe to CBR for more awesome videos in our playlist. Thanks for watching!